Welcome to a new vlog. Today we're going to take a closer look at this soldering tweezers. It's from a company called Secure, model number HD140. And if you've ever done any repair work, especially with SMD components and not just repair work, but even circuit design work, for sure you thought about how something like this would make your life easier at some point. I certainly did and I certainly wanted to have soldering tweezers for a long time but I never got any because the known brand ones are really expensive and I couldn't justify the expense for the occasional use while on the other end of the spectrum so far there weren't any decent affordable ones available on this um, secondary market but I think that's about to change. This particular kit comes in a few varieties depending on which type of plug power adapter you need. Plus there's a few varieties for the tips included and the cost will vary between $80 and $100 depending on if you order from their AliExpress shop or their own website and also depending on which variant of the kit you choose. Links to both locations will be included in the description below and I encourage you to check them out because Secure has sent this item for free for the purpose of this review so do check the links out. The item comes packed in this very nice uh, hard EVA uh, carry case which holds everything together. I like this a lot especially when there's like a bunch of accessories uh, included because it helps keep them organized and prevents losing them around the shop. Included you get this 65 watt uh, type C plus type A PD adapter which is a nice way to power the soldering iron itself but the soldering iron um, input power is not limited to that as it also accepts uh, you know DC input so any DC source would work even a battery however uh, if you go to a lower voltage performance is not the same. I will include a table they give with input voltage versus heating time performance. There is this nice little metal stand, has quite some weight to it. Uh, it has rubber backing, feels very high quality, looks like it, it was machined. They also include a 1.5 meter long USB type C silicone cable to power the soldering iron. This feels very high quality, it's uh, uh, nicely flexible. They also include a couple of uh, grounding cables. These presumably help you connect the metal parts of the iron to either a, uh, a uh, USB shield, uh, if you plug this one into uh, your power source, or to another earthing point on your workbench. There's a small bag with some screws to assemble the, the stand. Um, this, this is the other part of the stand plus a sponge and I also asked them to include these um, extra um, soldering tips. These are the knife type because the uh, default included one are a little thin and they work great for very small components like 0402 or 603 but these wider ones should also help with um, driving uh, more energy into larger components or pads. The soldering iron itself feels uh, nicely built. It's a plastic body with some rubber inserts on the finger grips. Weight is just 50 grams, so you barely feel this in your hand. There is a small 128 by uh, 32 pixel OLED screen and a couple of buttons for navigating the menu. On the back we have the USB Type-C or DC jack input and I think it also uses an accelerometer internally to detect when the iron is not being used to put it to sleep and then wake up automatically when you pick it up. When you first power up the iron it goes straight to standby mode and by pressing the A or B keys you can adjust the uh, temperature which right now shifts in increments of 50 degrees but this increment value can be adjusted in a menu system. To activate the heating you have to long press the a key and then it will switch to work mode and another long press will put it back into standby but there's also like a timer which will have the same effect if you don't use the iron for a certain amount of time. As long as you give it a good 20 volts capable USB power input heat up time is very fast. By long pressing the B key you enter the menu system 
and the menu system gives you access to quite a few settings you can adjust the starting working temperature the temperature step adjustment value you can do compensation or calibration for both left and right tip you can change the temperature unit uh, various adjustments for the sleep and standby time various uh, settings for the OLED screen then we have settings for limiting the input voltage and current so it's quite a comprehensive menu system that provides you with a full set of adjustments by default the uh, soldering tweezers come equipped with a set of these thin curved uh, IS model number tips these are obviously a good choice for small components however they are not very good at delivering energy for bigger pa pads hence why I also asked them to include the uh, knife shaped tips there's also a couple of details uh, important details to be mentioned here with these curved tips it is um, more difficult to obtain a good alignment at the tip and I would say that the lower limit is probably 0402 it might be possible to go down to 0201 but getting that alignment at the tip of these curved tips is going to be really difficult so that they both you know make contact with your component at the same time 0402 is doable uh, this is actually a board that I've been working on with 0402 components and I've been using the tweezers on this the tips are of uh, integrated cartridge type and they are a clone of the JBC C210 model and if you already own C210 tips from JBC they will be compatible with the tweezers in order to adjust the way the tips close in at the very tip um, there are four uh, grab screws located around each of the soldering iron tips you have to open those up with this tiny allen key included which frees up the the tip to be rotated or extracted depending on what you need this adjustment mechanism is not ideal it will take you a few tries to get you know that perfect adjustment at the tip and also there is the risk of stripping these small uh, grub screws they're very small this is not ideal uh, but once you've done it it should maintain the adjustment for a long time and you would only need to redo it once you uh, switch the tips now I want to do a quick uh, temperature uh, measurement with my special soldering iron uh, thermometer I have it set to 350 degrees Celsius uh, let's add a little bit of solder and check the temperature accuracy I'm gonna measure with both tips first okay so it's measuring like 50 degrees extra quite a round number and I'm running with default uh, uh, settings here let's try to do a compensation for that from the menu system okay so it's just a 20 degrees Celsius adjustment from the compensation menu so I think in this case we are better off with um, using the uh, temperature calibration menu so after running the uh, calibration procedure the soldering iron now measures about spot on for the, what I would call the right side and slightly higher for the left side together yeah slightly higher and I'm not sure if you're supposed to run like calibration for both the right side and the left side the menu said uh, left side calibration when I uh, entered the menu setting but I used this side of the iron because this was the one that was heating up during the calibration procedure so I, I haven't read the manual I'm not sure how that's supposed to be done but you know plus or minus 15 degrees celsius is good enough for me so i'm not going to pursue that any further there's also a very interesting uh, turbo boost mode you can configure a boost temperature in the menu settings and then i believe you can trigger it by pressing one of the buttons which will boost the temperature of the iron for a preset amount of time and that of course can be useful for putting a little more energy into a pad for a brief moment without stressing the components too much here's an interesting look of the soldering iron tweezers through this uh, top down tc004 thermal camera uh, it looks very interesting and it also shows us some measurements I will be reviewing this new affordable thermal camera in a future video it's under testing uh, but its review video uh, will be coming up soon
In the meantime, if you want to check it out, there will be a link placed in the description below. I quite like this uh, stand that they include in the package. Like I said, it does have some weight to it. it. It holds the tweezers pretty well due to that weight and it just feels stable. It's like there's no risk of tipping over and the automatic wake up works too when you pick up the iron and it was in uh, standby mode, it will automatically wake up. In terms of ergonomics, I mean, these tweezers are not perfect, but certainly very usable and it feels like they're better shaped than the other uh, cheaper alternatives on the market. One thing that will obviously annoy you is having this USB-C cable on the back, but that's not going to change as long as we have some form of uh, soldering iron which has a USB cable plugged on the back. The size and shape of the tweezers it's not too bad. I mean, I can easily grab these. They're not too wide. They're not heavy. You have to think about the fact that this is probably not going to be your main soldering iron. So you, this guy won't be doing 99% of your soldering. You'll only be bringing this out when you have a, a special task for it. Like swapping out a capacitor or a resistor without heating up a large portion of your PCB with hot air, uh, you know, possibly damaging something else which is nearby, like a plastic connector. And this is a quick example where I recently used this a lot. I'm working on this DC to DC converter um, compensation network, and I had to experiment with, you know, various uh, resistor capacitor values in 0402 package. And using this was much easier to swap those components than to use hot air, than wait for the board to cool off. And I would also probably have to protect the plastic connectors while using hot air. Just using this pair of tweezers was uh, much quicker uh, with a very rapid cool off time before I could test the PCB again. So much less stress on the PCB. I've swapped dozens and dozens of components without stressing the PCB and the PCB remained in top condition. The firmware and menu options seem to be feature packed on this. I don't think you're missing anything important. It seems to have it all and I don't think you're really going to need an open source firmware alternative for this because it already does pretty much all you need. Thermal performance is very good with very rapid um, heat up times due to these uh, C210 JBC style tips. Um, it also supports genuine JBC tips and one thing that I would recommend is to also get the wider style uh, knife tip that I'm showing here because the IS uh, thin ones that are included by default are not going to be adequate for larger components or pads. The only thing you could probably complain about this is the cost which is around you know 90 to 100 uh, USD. I feel that's slightly higher than what most people would like to throw at a tool that they would really be using as often as maybe, you know, 10% of their soldering time. But then again, I don't think there is much competition right now on the market. I don't know of any other similar tool that is as nicely built and supports C210 tips in this price range. But if you know of other such similar tools, please let me know in the comments below. And also let me know how do you feel about everything shown here. Would it be useful in your workflow to have such hot tweezers? It for sure is useful for me and it helps me out, but I would like to know how you feel. Let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in getting one of these, I will place links in the description below to their online shop. That was all for my review. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll be seeing you next time.